All right, everybody. So I'm uh, out in the woods again and uh, had such good luck last week that I decided to come out again and try and find a few more of those uh, trumpet chanterelles to throw into some food. Make a nice sauce. I want to have a steak tonight and uh, we'll see how that goes with it. So we'll see if we can find some. Um, just uh, down in the National Forest, public land, just walk out in the woods and uh, start looking at the ground. Uh, just started raining, but it's not going to stop me from uh, looking for anything good. Well, folks, if you're willing to take a little bit of time when you're out in the woods looking for things, you can actually find some really tasty stuff. This right here is a trumpet chanterelle. Just pick it, make sure. Underneath it looks like it has gills, but those are actually ridges. They are a part of the cap. Rule number one is pretty much don't pick anything with gills. So you pick it, you trim off the, the stem part. You know, make sure everything's good. There's nothing uh, on there, no bugs, no dirt. You pop that bad boy in the bag with all of his friends. And then you keep looking. Well, the first thing I tend to look for when I am uh, looking for those trumpet chanterelles is woods that kind of look like this, kind of open. I uh, have a couple pine trees, you know. I try to find pine trees because that seems to be where I have the most luck finding them. Uh, just, you know, growing right out of the leaf litter, the pine needles that are underneath them. So just, uh, yeah, keep your eyes on the ground, uh, obviously, if you're looking for mushrooms, and see what you can see. Um, you're going to come across a couple other trees, you know, mushrooms you're not looking for. Uh, it rained this morning, so there's a lot of extra stuff that kind of popped up overnight here. But we're still going to keep looking. Um, let's see. There's a pine tree over here. Let's see what we can find. Well, there's a couple older ones. They're older ones. I'm not going to pick them. Looks like the bugs and slugs have already gotten to them. A pine log that fell over. Got some growing right there. Old one again. And here's a bunch more, actually, that are right next to a pine tree. So, uh, let's see, any that are kind of, there's a couple that are kind of fresh right here. You want them when they're bright orange. The older ones, yeah, they don't taste any worse, but when in doubt, go for the freshest you can find. There's a couple more over there. Moist. And all around, even in the crappy pouring rain, got some of this bright orange tasty goodness everywhere you look. Now, I really wish I knew what these were. They're the same exact color as a chanterelle, but obviously they don't have a cap to them. And uh, I'll have to go home and see what I can find because there's a ton of them around here. You know, we got a couple more of the, the chanterelles here and there. Got some right here and a cluster right there. So they're kind of in the same space. Um, so I really want to find out if I can eat those too because, again, they're everywhere. So we'll see. Yeah. Absolutely love the smell how fresh rain brings out in the forest. Just there's nothing quite like it. Well, I uh, found a big old patch of wild blueberries here. And what you notice is a lot of these look like they've been stripped of their berries because they have. And that's a bit of a sign of a lot of bear activity in this area. But it's not unexpected. It is the National Forest. And... Uh, Hey, maybe I'll get lucky and see one today. One thing that you got to remember, folks, when you're out doing any foraging for yourself is it's kind of just like going to the grocery store. If you go out and you manage to pick something, you know, make sure it looks good, you know. There should be no bad smell. It should smell clean and fresh, just like a vegetable would, you know, in the supermarket. And, uh, you know, of course, even mushrooms do mold, they do rot. If it smells rotten, it's probably rotten, not worth trying to keep and save. Just remember that. Right here, folks, is actually a good example of what I was just talking about. So here's another very large trumpet chanterelle, but you can see it's moldy. Underneath the cap looks bad. Yeah, just chuck it out. It looks like I found some true chanterelles here, folks. They're not the trumpet chanterelles that I came out here for, but they are quite a bit bigger. 
They're pretty solid. They still have the same uh, ray structure underneath. Uh, but you notice they don't have that little trumpet, that funnel in the center of the cap, but uh, these are still very good to eat. All right, we're back at the truck, folks. Uh, spent about an hour foraging today. Had uh, some pretty good luck. Probably got about a pound, maybe about a pound and a quarter of the uh, the trumpet chanterelles that we came out here looking for. And this, this right here is a trumpet chanterelle. Notice, of course, the color. It's also hollow. That hollow goes all the way through the stem. Uh, they're kind of a bright orange, and underneath the cap, I'll get a good angle on that, they actually have rays. They're not gills. So, like I said, rule number one, probably don't pick anything but gills unless you're 100% sure what it is. Uh, if you do, you're kind of going to have a bad time. Um, in addition to the trumpet chanterelles, I was actually lucky enough to find some true chanterelles. They're a little bit meatier. You notice they don't have a hole in the center, and uh, the stems tend to be a lot meatier as well. So, all in all, I got a couple recipes I want to try, and uh, time to head home and see what I can whip up. See you in a bit.